sisters, coming to you from my spooktacular kitchen in Dorset to bring you a very deliciously spooky instalment of Kate's Kitchen. <laughs> so what devilishly delicious treat do I have in store for you today, coming to you from a kitchen where I'm surrounded by sharp knives, pumpkins, very large necklaces, candles, and many cloves of garlic, because let's just face it, this is the time of year where I allow dormant goth Kate to run free. So I'm gonna do this in true style. And today I'm gonna to bring you a little twist on a Halloween classic. We're gonna be making salted toffee apples, because let's just face it, the world has been, taken, has been taken by storm by salted caramel products for at least five to 10 years. I'm just thinking how long I've been gorging on salted caramel treats. I'd say probably 10 years to be perfectly honest. Um, so I'm gonna bring this to you today in lovely autumnal style. Well, oh, these lovely pumpkins, these fabulous cloves of garlic. My husband has smoked these garlic cloves and holy mackerel, do they smell, smell good. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. We will lie to you. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. We will do that thing. First thing to do is to wash your lovely red apples thoroughly, give them a good pat dry with some kitchen paper, and then I'd like you to assemble eight sort of sticks, really, some nice solid sticks that are gonna hold up as a handle, and then you're gonna shove them into the core of each apple with varying degrees of success. It, it has to be said that some of them went better than others. That one's quite impressive. This one, however, is snapped. So it's gonna be quite a short handle. If you get frustrated and you want something a little bit more sturdy, longer, you can always use a wooden skewer. So those are our apples prepped. And I put them on a baking sheet with some baking parchment inside. And once we've dipped them in the caramel, we're gonna put them back on there to set. So make sure you've got a baking tray that's big enough to hold your eight apples prepped in advance. For this recipe, and because we're making a caramel toffee menage, you can also need a sugar thermometer which I have here. So make sure you've got your probe ready, people. Now I'm gonna show you how to make the caramel. We're gonna put a few ingredients into a medium-sized, heavy-based saucepan to begin with. We're going to leave the salt and the cream part of this recipe for a little bit later on. So first, we're gonna be melting 500 grams of caster sugar, so there's a lot of sugar, but this is just the way Halloween sometimes has to roll. So 500 grams of sugar. I've got 50 grams of unsalted butter, which goes in there. We're gonna have two teaspoons of vinegar, delicious vinegar. Who doesn't want vinegar? That's important in this process. Two teaspoons of that. We're gonna have one tablespoon of gorgeous golden syrup. Reminds me of being a child, I'm putting it on my porridge. So one tablespoon of that. Pop that in there. Good tip, which I haven't currently applied, but a good tip when you're using sort of treacle or golden syrup to get it all off in one, stick a spoon into a hot cup of water first. It slides off effortlessly. Should have taken my own advice. We're also gonna put 150 ml of cold water into that saucepan and take it over to the ring. So initially, we're gonna put the contents of the pan over a low heat, a low heat at this point. We're gonna turn it up later, but we're going to allow the butter to melt so it all becomes a nice gloopy, sugary liquid. And that's gonna take probably four or five minutes at this temperature. I will be back. Now, as the butter is melting, you're gonna see little flecks of the butter hanging out in your sugary liquid. That's fine. Keep stirring the pot, my little witches, and all will come good. Who knows? Maybe it's going to take a little bit longer than four or five minutes. See how we get on. Now the witch is back, and there's hell to pay. Great. The last few remnants of the butter are just starting to melt away. And at this point, we're going to turn, hmm, we're going to clunk the camera on the stove, and we're going to turn the temperature up to medium high. So not too high, medium high. And we need to let this mixture bubble for a good 15 minutes. We need it to turn really dark, sort of golden brown, or until the temperature probe 
reaches 140 degrees. Saucy. So I'm gonna let this come up in temperature a little bit more. Expect this process to take about 15 minutes. I'll join you again interfrastically. It's bubbling, but it's still looking pretty blonde. Probably got another 10 to 12 minutes to go. I don't want to show you the colour. It's also quite difficult to get my hairdo and the pan in shot, so I wanted to show you that I'd achieved that. I'm just going to keep stirring it. It's getting quite bubbly now, isn't it? Hubble bubble. Toil and trouble. Make sure your spiders don't run away with the heat. Still a cat's the only cat who knows how to swim. Between two furry friends may be your cat. But everybody wants to be a cat. I swear with a heart. So about ten minutes in, maybe not, maybe nine. Still bubbling away very nicely. Not changing colour massively at this point. So this is where I'm going to start uh, asking the mixture some probing questions to see where it's at. Uh, here goes the interrogation. Coming up to 118, whoop, rising, 119, whoop, yeah, just about to hit 119 degrees C. So we've got another 21 degrees C to go. Shouldn't take too long. When the sugar starts to get this hot, it actually starts riding, rising, riding, rising in temperature pretty quickly. I'll be back. All right, it's starting to climb this last 10 degrees pretty quickly now. So you can see underneath all the bubbles that the color has changed. We've hit 140, so I'm gonna take that off the heat. It's got really sticky as well. I've just dropped a bit on the floor and it's like So uh, yeah, you might want a hot bowl of water with some suds uh, available pretty soon. So there we go. Um, I'm just gonna put that to one side for a sec. And then very, very carefully, you are going to stir in um, two tablespoons of single cream and half a teaspoon of molden or something similar, sea salt flakes. We're gonna do that really, really carefully because we don't want the cream to split. So I'm just gonna stir off some of that heat. Just a little bit. <laughs> Silicon spatula as ever, people. This is what we want. So I'm going to pour that cream in and just stir at the same time. So you can see that brings it up to a little bit of more of a froth because we're adding some water. And the idea with the caramel is that by adding water to the sugar solution, you're allowing the sugar to caramelize with the aid of the water and then evaporating the water off. So that's what we're doing there. So putting a little bit of cream in there has added a bit more liquid back in. Look at that gorgeous color. And we're gonna add a little pinch of those crusty sea salt flakes as well. Stir that in. Ladies and gentlemen, there we have our caramel. Ah! Now it is time to dip the apples. So this is still pretty runny. And you're going to expect a nice little blob of toffee. I love that bit at the bottom of the toffee apple, where it's just splodged down from the top of the apple as it's set. So this is where the sticks become. It's important that they can hold the weight of the apple. So we are just dipping these apples in and amongst the toffee, like so, popping them on the tray, and continuing to do this with all of the apples. All right, so I've coated all the apples now and I've given them a little sprinkle of sea salt while the caramel is still a little bit wet. Gonna leave those two set for a good half an hour. Have some patience and I'll show you some photos of them when they're done. Watch out, watch out, we'll do that thing to you. If you don't believe it again, superstitious. Cause we're sisters, we're vicious.